I need to shake this out. <laughs> I can't talk. In this video, I kind of just want to lay out chronologically, more or less, a history of Gabby Hanna's controversies as sort of a cautionary tale about problematic behavior, toxic relationships, and mental illness. But first, if you're a person who's watching this and you're not me, hello, and thank you so much. If you're one of my friends or loved ones, an even bigger thank you, um, I'm embarrassed. You can probably click off now because it's about to get weird for us. I'm kidding. It means a lot to me. I find a lot of the controversy around Gabby Hanna to be interesting because she's problematic in a way that's different from most of the YouTubers I watch. I would say most YouTubers experience a scandal at some point. Typically they learn from it, apologize, grow, and they're redeemed uh, by the audience. More or less that's kind of the redemption arc that most YouTubers go through at some point in their career. On the other hand, you have certain problematic YouTubers like Trisha Paytas, uh, Tana Mojo as a couple of examples. They're, they're the train wrecks of YouTube and they find themselves immersed in this drama, but YouTubers like them recognize that this is part of who they are. They're often apologizing. They're often attributing problems to their own behavior. Um, and it's kind of a just a slower process for them. I will say that I have more respect for YouTubers like that that will at least own up to their problems even if they are slow to learn. But with Gabby Hanna it just seems to be different. Uh, different in that anytime something comes up it seems that she is still a good person and she is just a victim. Um, something seems a little off here so I kind of want to lay out not all the facts, um, but just what I've compiled over the past couple of days. So to give you the standard rundown, Gabby Hanna is a popular Viner turned YouTuber, yada yada yada. She is known for her videos around story times, comedy, great, her music career, awesome. But she really makes herself out to seem like some sort of mental health advocate um, and an advocate for therapy. So that makes things interesting. So when it comes to Gabby's earlier controversies around like 2011, 2015, um, she had a couple of scandals, uh, mostly on Twitter, uh, that revolved around joke stealing and some controversial remarks um, that I find disgusting, as would most decent people as would all decent people. She was called out for stealing jokes from certain comedians, Bo Burnham, uh, Louis C.K., Mitch Hedberg. Uh, there might have been another one. Um, it's kind of boring. It's very old, old tea. Um, but it's worth noting that this is something that she's done. She has very blatantly told jokes, passing it off as her own content that very clearly belong to other comedians. And she's kind of tried to defend herself saying like, oh, I don't remember those jokes. They were up in my brain and somehow they came out and I must have thought that it was an original thought. Eh, I, don't, I don't know if I buy it. it. She hasn't seemed to do it since. The way she talks about these comedians that she just loves so much, especially Bo Burnham, I find it hard to believe that she can pull a line from one of their acts and just not remember. I love comedy as well. Stand up, love it. For the most part, if I'm reciting a line, I remember who that came from. If not the show, if not the context, I'll remember which comedian said that. Maybe I'm different. She also tweeted something very inappropriate about children. She very recently, I guess because she was under a lot of fire, uh, kind of apologized uh, for these seven, eight years later, citing that she was younger and those, you know, that was back in 2011. I was there in 2011. I was also young. Uh, I, again, distasteful, disgusting, disgraceful. Gabby went to a party that was kind of like a YouTuber LA party. She saw rice gum there, which I guess they had had some sort of previous beef. Rice gum is known uh, for making diss tracks, rapping on YouTube. 
So at this party, Gabby approaches Rice Gum. She's got her phone in her hand and is um, actively posting videos to Snapchat. So in the video, you can kind of see, um, I'll put a clip here. In the video, you see that Rice Gum is not interested in engaging in some sort of rap battle. She makes a jab at him for having a ghostwriter. It makes sense that he wouldn't want to engage. Okay, so update. Sorry, that was him crying. Um, Rice Gum didn't think that joke was very funny, and he hit me in the middle of the party and shattered my phone. Here's my pop socket in my hand um, that fell off when he shattered my phone. It's broken. Sad, I just made this. Okay, so I don't want to say that I don't believe Gabby um, at all, that, that he hit her, he twisted her arm, he bruised her legs, he left scratch marks on her, and shattered her phone. It's a lot. I will say it's hard to believe all of it. Um, but I find it odd that she says that he shattered the display as well as her back camera, which a lot of people have pointed out that she took photos of her legs um, that had to have been taken with her back camera because her flashlight was on. It's very strange. Um, what I find a little more strange is just how composed she is. She does, she keeps saying, if I look like I'm crying, she, she doesn't. And I'm a little skeptical as well because as far as I know, nobody from that party has corroborated her story, but one person did corroborate his story. Now that that one person was Romeo Lacoste, so take that with as many grains of salt as you need to. From his account, this wasn't a situation where rice gum hit or assaulted Gabby, but rather they had kind of a tug of war back and forth with her phone because he did not want her to post these videos. And then at that point, he grabbed the phone out of her hand and smashed it, which everybody agrees he should not have done. It is illegal and it's just a scummy move, um, but I'm not totally convinced. I'm speculating. When I first heard that story, I was a fan of Gabby's and I believed, I believed what she said. She. She said somebody hit her, why wouldn't I believe that? Um, and that's where I think things start to get a little bit hairy because if what she's saying is not entirely true, those are some pretty big claims. That is also pretty cold tea, but again, it's, it's worth noting. I'm talking about the vlog squad, obviously. <laughs> and that's something that I've wanted to like talk about for a long time. In terms of the vlog squad fallout, fallout, uh, how, whatever you want to call it. Prior to 2018, she was in a lot of David's vlogs, um, the vlog squad members, she seemed very tight with, and then suddenly she wasn't recording with most of them for the, for the most part. Um, so she kind of came out with a video called something like things I'm leaving behind in 2018, um, where she said, nothing happened, literally nothing happened. But that's interesting because there were some tweets, again, it's all about Twitter with her, or maybe not her. There was a user by the name of Jeanette Riot, J-A-N-E-T-T-E. -E. And somehow this Jeanette Riot person knew all about the David Dobrik and Liza Koshy breakup before it was announced. So that really looks odd. And the thread reads, Well, I have some news. My source in Vlog Squad messages me this morning saying to be quiet about this, but I'm going to say it. David and Liza are broken up. Liza and David are still figuring things out, how to be friends. Once they get comfortable, they will announce a breakup and be very friendly again. The two are trying to be friends, but have decided they are not together. What David said was him trying really hard to avoid admitting the breakup amidst all the speculation. They are so broken up though, sis, so unless you hear them both say it in, then get ready for them to officially announce a breakup. Sad but true. People were kind of trying to figure out who this kind of vlog squad insider was. People found that Gabby's real name is Gabrielle Jeanette Hanna. Slight difference in the spelling, but it's too close of a, of a coincidence, especially for somebody who's in with the vlog squad. If they're in with the vlog squad, why I don't know, maybe they didn't know Gabby's middle name. I don't, I don't buy it. 
And it's funny because when I was looking for these tweets on Jeanette Riot's Twitter page, I found that this account in 2018 was engaging a lot um, with YouTube audiences and kind of leaving these little breadcrumbs of gossip and drama while Gabby was claiming that she was still friends with the vlog squad and nothing happened. I saw a reply. I'm going to read it here. So there was a reply to a Trisha Paytas tweet, which has been deleted, uh, but the reply is spill it or I will. And I was curious. I wanted to see in the comments if I could get the context for what she's talking about. And towards the end, someone says, do it. Time to expose the vlog squad. So I thought, oh, this has something to do with Trisha Paytas exposing the vlog squad or threatening to, most likely, and Gabby chiming, oh, I'm sorry, not Gabby, Jeanette chiming in and saying, uh, do it or I will. So it's a little odd if this is Gabby that nothing happened, yet you're so tempted to, you know, spill the tea on the vlog squad. And speaking of Trisha Paytas, which I'm going to talk more about towards the end of this video, in kind of the recent drama that's gone on, Trisha has alluded to some of what happened between Gabby and the vlog squad, stuff that we haven't heard about or we haven't gotten details around. They had their own issues with Gabby and are claiming their own audio messages of Gabby cursing people out because they don't have the right food or whatever the case is. Like, there's a reason that group and a lot of other groups don't talk to her anymore. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Like, literally, people play me audio messages for her, like, screaming and stuff. And I was just like, think about David Dobrik and the vlog squad. David's loyal. Loyal AF. And him and Gabby started together, right? Like, they, like, they, he started the vlogs with her and stuff like that. To be kicked out of David's life as a friend, you have to do something evil. You have to do something really bad because who has he kept out? He doesn't tell people in that group that have done questionable things, controversial things. For Gabby, like, we just grow up, they don't. Trust and believe. She gave us enough information, if we're to believe her, that um, there was a falling out and that it probably had something, at least something to do with Gabby being a less than stellar friend. But then again, nothing happened. December 2018, it's another controversy, scandal, whatever, that I just don't find to be that salacious or interesting. Just to quickly recap, Gabby did a genius interview where she sang, she talked about and sang her song, Monster. During the interview, she sings part of her song and then because of technical issues, her voice cracks or she blows the mic or something like that. Long story short, there's a second there where she sounds awful. So what if I'm the monster? And as such, she became a meme. I don't know if I love referring to her as a meme. I guess technically nothing viral, but um, it looked like there was a small community of people that were poking fun at this whole situation. So I found it interesting when Gabby posted a video called Gabby Hanna Reacts to Monster Meme. And in it, she talks about how one of her life goals was to become a meme someday, and she's a meme now. My dream of becoming a meme came true. And she watched all of these uh, and reacted to them, and she was just so awkwardly cracking up throughout the whole video. <laughs> Dude. Um, and it kind of it reeked. Of, of desperation. I think really the scandal here is that she capitalized off of one of the memes and made merch out of it. I personally don't find anything wrong with that. If people are going to make fun of you and you're going to decide to capitalize off of that, I think that's the best revenge. I don't necessarily see anything wrong with that from a moral standpoint. Um, but what I find interesting is that now when Gabby refers to that time, she talks about being really depressed and really crushed over the situation. Um, so that time was like really painful and people were judging my character and saying that things that just like simply weren't true about me so i just had to like kind of back off couldn't look at youtube couldn't open the internet couldn't look at twitter couldn't look at instagram and through that found myself again because i was forced to detach from the internet but at the time she acted like it was hilarious and she was going along with it i thought it was really funny as she kind of does with everything uh that goes down anytime that something bad happens she seems to act like nothing on the internet can bring her down 
which was it? You know, is it this hilarious thing and you're so honored to now be a meme? Or was it really mean and traumatizing? My speculation is that Gabby can act as if things don't bring her down, but if you criticize her singing, that is the end of her. I don't think that she is able to even pretend to hold it together if you criticize her singing. But she claimed that she sang the song so well. She hit that note perfectly. Honestly, I hit the note and I sound the way I want to sound. It's not embarrassed of that clip. It was really just Genius's equipment and whoever was operating it, they, they failed, not Gabby. So if people are making fun of your singing, but your singing was totally fine, again, why is this bothering you so much? Mm. So somewhere towards the end of 2018, Gabby took a brand deal with a company called Kenza Cosmetics. She was promoting these brushes. I'm sorry, but this company, Kenza Cosmetics, is giving away their makeup brushes for free from 2018 while supplies last, and I figured it's free stuff. Why wouldn't I tell you guys? All you have to pay is shipping. Here's some of the 2018 styles that they're trying to get rid of to make room for 2019. I love these ones, these marble ones. <gasps> Cute with that little fluffy brush heels. Yes. So a lot of people jumped on that. $80 sounds like high-end brushes. And with the beauty community blowing up, everyone wants to be a makeup artist. Young people and those that don't have a lot of disposable income getting these high quality brushes and only paying for shipping, it's a no-brainer, especially when they're being endorsed by somebody that you trust. However, it later came out that this was all just kind of a scam. A lot of people were not receiving their brushes, and those that did receive them found them to be very, very, very cheap in quality. And in fact, some people found these exact same brushes on AliExpress for less than $5 a set. Gabby addressed this in a Get Ready With Me video where she didn't apologize for her part in, in all of this. She didn't say, hey guys, this was an oversight or I didn't do my homework. Nothing like that, nothing. Instead, she told her fans to manage your expectations and that because they paid $10 for the set, they should expect a $10 quality set. They're very comparable to e.l.f. brushes, which are between one and six dollar range. But the bottom line here, and I think this is obvious, is that when you work with a brand, you represent that company. Moreover, with YouTube creators, they're speaking to a very tailored audience through parasocial interactions, which Gabby loves to talk about. I think people don't often recognize the nature of a parasocial relationship, where they feel like they know you, they're a fan of you, but to you, they are a stranger. These people trusted you. They trusted you when you said that something was of a certain quality, they trusted that is the quality that you were selling them. I'm not sure what quality people were expecting. So Gabby Hanna, you lied, and Gabby Hanna does not care about her fans. Um, and that was pretty much it, I think, for the most part, until this whole thing involving Trisha Paytas, Gabby DiMartino, Jesse Smiles, lots of people. This just got so nasty right around November, December of 2019. And really what drives me kind of nuts when I think about this is that if you take a step back and you just look who got involved, how, what was said, more importantly the damage caused, you will see that Gabby is responsible for just about all of the problems within this huge saga. Going back to November 2019, Trisha Paytas collabed with Gabby DiMartino on some sort of project um, where supposedly they had a great time, um, it was a big success, blah blah blah. Gabby Hanna, who is friends with Gabby DiMartino, found out about this and sent Gabby D um, a text message, something along the lines of, you were with Trisha last week, did she say anything about me? To which Gabby replied, something along the lines of, no, she just said that she thinks you don't like her. Which I think, I think a lot of girls have, have been told that or have said that before, which was a lie because we found out from Trisha later that Trisha actually said, I don't trust Gabby. I don't like Gabby. She didn't go into why. She just said, ah, I'm not a fan, essentially. Which apparently made Gabby Hannah livid. So, she reaches out to Trisha, she's texting Trisha and blowing her up, and from what I understand, that escalated to the point that Trisha was just demanding to Gabby Hanna, you need to leave me alone, stop messaging me. At which point, 
you know, the enraged, infuriated Trisha Paytas posted a video called Why I Don't Trust Gabby Hanna. And I tell you guys a story once for all. I have one issue with Gabby Hanna. One of the scummiest, lowest things that has ever happened to me and she's never once apologized. She thinks it's totally fine. I don't know this girl. This is my issue with her. When me and Jason started hooking up in 2017, I did a video called like YouTubers I've hooked up with. She, by the clues, guessed that I was hooking up with Jason. I was. She texted Jason. And she told Jason, or I guess, I don't know if she texted him or told him in person. But basically, she told him, hey, be careful, Trish has herpes and you're sleeping with her and blah, blah, blah. In an attempt to get Gabby to stop. And I don't really blame her, honestly. Like, Trisha can put too much out there. But, um, but this was interesting because the way that Trisha put it out there was to say, hey, you think I'm always talking about you. You think everyone's always talking about you and everything's about you. When in fact, I'm not talking about you. I've probably talked about you three times or with three different people or something like that. Here's the reason. Back at the end of 2017, when Trisha started hooking up with Jason Nash, Gabby reached out to Jason and said, hey, by the way, I've heard that Trisha has an incurable disease, so you might want to get checked out, which, turned out not to be true, but more importantly, is not Gabby's business. So the whole point of this video was basically to say, here's the reason I don't like you, which she's told Gabby in the past, but to say very clearly, this is why I don't like you, this is why I don't trust you, now leave me alone, it's aired out, I'm not talking about you behind your back, here it is. So then Gabby goes on to, I would say rant on her Insta stories, but I think she really tried to seem like composed and not bothered. But then if you're not bothered, why are you even doing this in the first place? Going on and on in her Insta stories about how justified she was in doing this and reaching out to Jason, her friend that she cares so much about, pulling her fans asking like, hey, was this messed up? Or was this just me being a good friend? And of course, overwhelmingly, her fans are like, no, you're being a good friend. Is it wrong of you to say, hey, just so you know, I've heard this, don't know if it's true, but this person told me, talk to them about it, ask about it. Because here's the thing, like, Trisha and Jason were two consenting adults in this arrangement, and it is between them to talk these things out. And you can claim that you're just being a good friend and looking out for your friends, but one, we find out that Jason never responded to Gabby. He showed me the text, he doesn't respond to Gabby. Gabby would constantly reach out to him. He doesn't respond for a very specific reason as none of the people in that friend group do. If my friend were just making a kind gesture and looking out for me and I thought of that person as a friend, I would respond in some form or fashion. I think most of us would. But it was totally out of line. It was not her place. And, and what, I mean, what, what do you do from there? Do you just become the person who polices all of your friend's sexual health? No. What was interesting too in this kind of series of Instagram stories, Gabby goes on and on about how she doesn't need this because she's got such an amazing life and boyfriend and a house and a music career and friends and essentially I'm a happy person, I'm not miserable like you. And we hear this spiel a lot. In fact, it's almost becoming like a running joke in the commentary community around Gabby. It almost seems like a two-pronged approach where on um, one side, it, she's saying all these things to say, you must be jealous of her, but also she's a happy person, so why would she want to engage in this drama? And somehow she always ends up at the center of it. Happy people don't hurt others or try to hurt others. And while all this was going on, um, another Viner turned YouTuber by the name of Jesse Smiles went on Twitter, subtweeted something about character, and it was, it was clearly about Gabby. And in the comments, there was a fan of Jesse's and a former fan of Gabby's that pointed out something along the lines of, hey, guys, let's not forget that Gabby is somebody that publicly supported Jesse's rapist back when all of this happened with Curtis Lepore, which I'll get into. So that got pretty messy when Gabby proceeded to DM this fan to defend herself and her name but then she proceeded to divulge a bunch of her personal information. There were some kind of underhanded remarks about um, employment, but also about her mental health and medication, just stuff that is not her business to share with anyone, obviously. And that just went too far. But then she did it again with another fan who was 15 years old, I think within a span of like 24 hours. This obviously was getting out of hand. Jesse posted a video more or less saying like, hey, 
I started out by subtweeting it, Gabby, and now this has come to this and it needs to stop. So the Curtis Lepore situation. Jesse and Curtis were in a relationship, I guess, from their Vine days. And sometime, I think in 2013, Curtis allegedly assaulted Jesse in her sleep and was charged with assault, sexual assault, if I'm not mistaken. I believe he got off by making some sort of statement that confessed to what he'd done. And then this is where the timing gets pretty confusing because Jesse and Gabby became friends somewhere towards the end of 2013 after this had happened. But then they'd had a falling out at the beginning of 2014. Beginning of 2014 is when the story broke about Curtis and Jesse uh, via TMZ. That's how Gabby learned about the situation, and then somehow they were friends again. It's confusing. But apparently Gabby and Jesse had another falling out because, quite frankly, Gabby was being a bad friend uh, once again, and she's not owning up to that either. More or less, Gabby felt that Jesse was holding her back from networking opportunities, and because she had to take her friend's side, she was alienating herself and not able to make connections and be friends and hang out with the people she wanted to. And kind of the, the most shocking line that came out of all of this mess was when Jesse told us, I will literally never fucking forget because I cannot believe, like, till this day that she would say something like this, she said, Jesse, Curtis's friends didn't rape you. Kind of defending herself in hanging out with Curtis and his friends where I, she says that she wasn't hanging out with Curtis, he was there, but she was hanging out with his friends. And his friends didn't do that to you, so why do you care? So fast forward to present day, more or less, when Gabby is going on and on in these fans' DMs, she's claiming that she'd never tweeted at him except for something like once in 2013 before she knew anything about this story. But she says that she's never taken his side and there are no tweets anywhere that could support this. However, people did find receipts and if I can find any of those, I'll put them up here. I'm gonna get some clarity around that. And that more or less brings us up to date. Though she's been just generally kind of annoying since all that happened and a lot of people on the platform are just fed up with her. It's only a matter of time before something else comes up. It's just funny that there are certain things that I hear coming out of Gabby time and time and time again that I don't hear from anybody else, particularly any other YouTube creators, but really anybody else. Things like, oh, I'm just so happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. This amazing house and boyfriend and friend and music career. I'm so happy. Why would I need to get involved in that? I'm so happy. I'm so happy. You must be jealous. It's just, I'm in a place in my life where I'm so fucking happy. Like, I have great people in my life. Like, my friendships, my love life, like, my house, my career. Like, everything's great. And I'm so secure in myself and who I am. It sounds so corny and cliche, but I'm doing stuff that makes me happy. Like, every day I get to wake up and write music and record and perform and focus so much on that. And, you know, inspire and help people in the process. And now I'm in such a, like, healthy, happy, genuinely good place. I have three amazing friends that I hang out with. Don't talk about anybody, don't do it. Like, I, I'm in my fucking house, living my life. She often points out how she's such a good person and such an amazing friend and she's nothing but caring and supportive with the people in her life, anybody in her life. I am so kind to people in my life because I never would try to hurt somebody. I would never try to say something to somebody to hurt their feelings. I would never go out of my way to, like, hurt somebody. But also telling us that good people don't need to tell you that they're good people. And if somebody's telling you that they're a good person, they probably aren't. She posted this tweet that says, People with good intentions don't need to remind you all the time they have good intentions. People with good hearts don't need to remind you they have good hearts. I am so kind. Honest people don't need to convince you they're honest. The loudest people usually have the most to hide. The irony is insane. I can't believe she doesn't see that. Whenever a scandal breaks and we want her to apologize for her part in something, she often will say, if the internet has decided they hate you, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can say to change that. And you can't really defend yourself because once people decide that you're manipulative or a scam artist, like no matter what you say, it's just a part of manipulation and a part of scamming. Oh, this clip is a gem. Um, you might think that Gabby's referring to the Kenta Cosmetics scandal here. 
Nope, no mention of it. Um, this came directly after talking about the monster meme and how much hate she was getting after her genius interview. And that is just simply not true. Yes, cancel culture is a real thing, but uh, most of us with rational minds want to see you learn, grow, apologize, and really go through that redemption arc. Essentially, we want to see you recognize your part in whatever drama or controversy goes down and just stop being problematic. Especially people like me who are fans of her work. I like watching her. I relate to a lot of things that she says she goes through. So I really do, I want to see this from her. And it really just at the end of the day, it makes a bad name for those of us that do have mental illnesses, are advocating for mental health awareness, are advocating for therapy and working on oneself. And it makes those of us look bad. You're, you're representing people like me and you make us look bad by not just being a mess, but not owning up to your crap. That, that's what this is all about. This is all about accountability. And just as I expect the people that see me and my behavior on a regular basis to hold me accountable to good behavior, that's what we're doing to Gabby. And she's not having that. Anyway, I went off on a little tangent there. I was actually talking about things that Gabby often says. Another thing I hear her often say is that people feel entitled to her explanations. Honestly, it's an apology that most of us want or some sort of symbol of growth, remorse, something. They're a fan of you, but to you, they are a stranger. Are you now entitled? And when she says this, she's essentially explaining that it is not something that she owes to anyone Sure, I can agree with that to an extent, but expect that that's going to affect your career, that's going to affect your audience, that's going to enrage certain people because you are an influencer. You do have a young audience. You have people that are looking up to you that are modeling their behavior after yours. Some people are gonna be a little pissed. Some fans are gonna feel betrayed, especially when you go back to things like the whole Kenza Cosmetics scandal. And now here you are saying that if your fans would like for you to address something important that they're entitled. Are you now entitled? Once again, Gabby Hanna does not care about her fans. And then of course something we often hear Gabby say. And I'm a fucking bad person because no matter what I do, I'm always a bad person because enough is enough. Why do you talk shit people? I don't like you. I literally never show anything except love and kindness and acceptance. Always in person through text and DM. I always support you, reach out, offer to you. So why do you feel the need to constantly spread lies about me and tell people I don't like you? It was so beyond me. And I don't know why people don't like me. Like, I don't understand. And she even said that in this one. She goes, I'm so good at people and I'm tired of being shit on. I was like, you're not. You're lying about someone you don't even know. And I'm so sick of being that person to everybody all the time. And kind of here recently, Gabby tweeted something about criticism, and it seemed to be aimed at the commentary community. I pride myself and like people in my life had me on like, you're so good at taking constructive criticism. Do you feel like there's ever been uh, like a drama channel video that came out and they had just criticism? If I'm being honest, I didn't really watch them because I just okay. knew that it was going to spin out of control and it hurts me too much to watch them about myself. And she said something along the lines of people are making what they call constructive criticism, but if it's not constructive, it's just criticism. And if you do that, you're being an effing B. <laughs> Which tells us that Gabby cannot handle criticism in any form, which just blows my mind. And if you want to talk about entitlement, that is a person who thinks that they are entitled to not be criticized ever, constructively or otherwise. When I'm sorry, but almost all of us existing in society are subject to criticism every day in some way, whether that be in our personal lives or at work or even where those two might cross over. Many, 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 maybe most people could get in a lot of trouble at work for posting something so vile and inappropriate about children. And in general, just crappy behavior online, in the public, all of us would fall privy to some criticism. But no, somehow Gabby's different. She is the victim. She is being singled out. She is constantly under fire and being misrepresented. And the rest of us just need to back off and stop criticizing her. Are you now entitled? But as an entitled person, 
I want to see change. I want to see growth. I want Gabby to grow up, learn from her mistakes, and own up to her role in these matters. I want her to go through the process of a redemption arc so that I can get behind her and support her and support her work, like I said, as I enjoy it, so I can sleep at night. I guess you can say I'm entitled to that. Are you now entitled? But we don't have that, so I'm gonna do my best to try to sleep tonight without having that peace of mind. Wish me luck to the one person who's watching that's not me. Thank you again. Until next time, bye. Manage your expectations.